everyone, it's I, Wacky Anime What If here, here to present you with What If Deku and Bill Cipher Made a Deal Part 4. Before we get into this, be advised, this can contains quite a bit of depress depressing stuff and some sensitive co sensitive content. So please view at your own discretion. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get into this. It's been a day since half of Mustafa City was destroyed. Many citizens and heroes alike are grieving over their family and loved ones. Many children have become orphans, even had to watch their own family die in front of them with their eyes going lifeless when, when they were full of life before. Some kids even tried to wake their parents up, not even understanding the situation. And the heroes are under fire from the media. Considering only All Might showed up, no other hero showed up to the incident. Were they all afraid is what most people say nowadays. They are all scared. They're shaking their boots. Can the heroes really protect us? All these were all these ideas and rumors were popping around. With currently news reporters news reporters at the exact area of where the incident took place. We are currently looking at the memorial built for the victims of what is now called the Hankai Incident. Over 4.7 million people have died and many more are homeless. Also, the news reporter was interrupted when behind him a mother pushed past the news reporter in a hurry, muttering, please don't be here, while running past people grieving and holding the bodies of their loved ones and crying into them, and many others staring at the photo of the deceased and not wanting to believe it. I believe this was all a nightmare. As she started to run past victims, looking frantically, scanning the area for a certain person that's very dear to her, as she looked around, hoping, begging, praying, anything that she's not here, that she was just at school, that she wasn't on the bus that was heading towards it, that went through this area, as she looked around, trying to find where her daughter is, she found one body after a few a few hours of of her search of her frantic search as she looked at the body she could recognize it anywhere she could recognize it as she sees it every day it's the body of her daughter as she walked closer towards it her breath being hitched and her legs shaking her entire body shaking as she walked closer and closer, holding back the tears. But as she was right beside the body, she immediately collapsed on her knees, not being able to handle the gravity of the situation, not being able to, not being able to accept this. As she puts her hand towards her daughter's shoulder and starts to shake her and says, Please, sweetheart, please wake up, please. As she says this, and all expectation and all prayers were absolutely dashed into the ground as she didn't respond. She looked so peaceful is what her thoughts were as she had no injury on her. But her skin was as cold, as cold as a corpse. Her eyes were lifeless and they were open. She stared into them and saw nothing there and immediately knew her daughter is dead. The one and only daughter. The daughter that she saw this morning when she was going to school. When she and her her husband went to work. And she went to school and was so lively. And now she's dead. She thinks in her head. As she still continues to try to wake her up. Knowing deep down that her daughter is dead. And that she can cry now still holding back her tears, not wanting a single tear to go down her cheek, knowing if she does, she would have to accept her daughter's death. But after a few minutes of trying to wake her up, and it all failing, a tear falls down her cheek and lands on 
her daughter's body as she pulls her daughter's body towards her and wraps it into an embrace and grips it tightly and starts letting the dam of tears flow as they flow down her cheek cheek she cheeks she immediately wails out as loud as possible screaming out to the heavens why this would happen why she was such a sweet and innocent girl why she thought in her head as she stared into her daughter's eyes tears flowing down her cheeks and landing on to her daughter's face and towards her body soaking her clothes as when she was holding her tighter, she felt something in her daughter's pocket, felt like a piece of paper. She immediately pulled the paper out while still crying, and as she pulled it out, she saw a paper folded. As she unfolded each part of the paper, she saw that it looked like a drawing, but it was drawn in crayon. As it completely unfolded, what she saw made her cry. She saw a little girl in the drawing with what seems to be her mother and father beside her holding hands and it says happy family on top of it immediately as she saw this she, she cried even more she cried on the paper until it was soaked and she gripped her daughter's body even tighter than before into a bigger hug and says i love you so much why why? And as she was screaming this, it, it caught the attention of the newscast as they pointed their cameras towards her. And many people around around Japan saw this and felt quite bad. As this was happening, as she gripped her, her daughter's body as much as possible into the hug, she let go of the piece of paper as it gently fell to the ground. The words that were on top of the picture of the family was happy family, but on top of that was my heroes, as it pointed towards the little girl's mom and dad, POV change. Currently, Aizawa is in Nezu's office discussing what they should do about the media and the perpetrator of the Honkai incident. As they were talking about about this for quite a few hours and managed to formulate a few plans and ideas. All of a sudden, a phone goes off in the room. Aizawa immediately looks at All Might and glares at him and says, You should silence your phone. This is a serious conversation we are having. Millions of people have died, and you're not going to silence your phone. You know that any villain could hack into it, and they'd have all the information about what we're planning. As he s says this, and glares at All Might, and All Might shakes a little bit, before realizing that his phone is on silent. As he stares at Aizawa and says, it's not mine, it's yours. As he notices that the sound is coming from Aizawa, as Aizawa immediately looks and looks at his pocket and puts his hand in and picks out his phone out of his pocket to see it was ringing. And immediately he looks at Small Might, who had a smug face and the biggest shit-eating grin he could muster towards Aizawa. But that immediately disappeared as Aizawa glared at him. And he looked away and whistled. Immediately, All Might thought that Aizawa was going to just hang up on the phone like he always does when he, they're talking about serious th hero business. But to his surprise, as Aizawa checks his phone and sees who is calling, he looks at Nezu and asks, Nezu, can I step out to take this? It may be important. Immediately, All Might looks at Aizawa as if he grew his second head. He's never asked to step out to answer a phone call when they were discussing stuff like this. That person must be very important, he thinks in his head. Nezu immediately answers, of course, Aizawa. As Aizawa steps out, POV change. Small Might. Small Might looks at Nezu and says, whoever is calling must be important to him. He, If he is willing to step outside instead of just ignoring it like usual, Nezu calmly sips his tea and says, the important person you're talking about is his wife. Small Might immediately looks at him and says, Oh, makes sense. Wait, 
He has a wife? He screams, as Nezu chuckles a little bit, before saying, also, he has a kid. Quite energetic. Opposite of Aizawa, he actually, before that Honkai incident, he requested a few days off to reconnect with his kid a little bit more, since... He hardly sees her anymore because of hero work. Small Might immediately looks at Nezu and then looks outside and outside to see Aizawa face back against the door answering the phone. Just now about to answer the phone. And immediately he stares at him and says, Huh, he sounds like a gr- good father making time for his daughter. Immediately as he says this, Flashes go through his mind, and immediately immediately he imagines his dad with the belt, and he starts to sh- shiver and shake. But this doesn't go unnoticed by Nezu, as he immediately pushes pushes a cup of tea towards him and says, It's herbal tea. You should take it. It'll probably help with your nerves. As All Might accepts the tea as he picks it up shakily, albeit, but he drinks it and calms down a little bit. POV change, Aizawa. As Aizawa steps outside, he answers the phone in his hand and puts it to his ear and hears the familiar voice of his wife. Aizawa immediately says, Nimuru, I'm currently busy right now. I know you said to ask for more hours off to spend time with Shio and you, but the Honkai incident has me overworked and paperwork, complaints, and rescue work. I will try to make time for all three of us. After all, Hazashi told me to make the most with what time we have left. I hate to say it, but he is right. Now, what were you going to ask? Or what were you going to say? He says, Aizawa hears on the other end of the line that her breath is hitched and she's crying over the phone he gets worried and he has a hunch but hopes it's wrong and feels as if she may have a panic attack at this rate Aizawa immediately says Nemuru I need you to breathe in and out listen to my voice as he repeats this over and over and she follows the instructions she calms down slightly as Azawa can still hear her crying over the phone and decides after a few minutes to ask a question that he was scared to ask. Any father would be scared at this moment. Azawa asks, is she on with you and is she okay? He says with such so much concern, even with his cal- calm and collected nature that it shows through. Nemur Nemur Nemuri as she heard what he said, started to cry more, but answers the question. Nemuru Nemuri Shion is she is she finds herself choking up while saying that she never as a mother would want to say, but knew that she had to say it. Aizawa immediately said, not knowing he raised his voice, she what? What happened, Nemuru? As he said this, his face morphed from his usual calm and collected face into panicked and afraid, something he rarely would show, as he continued to ask, not knowing that he was raising his voice even higher the more he asked. Nemuru immediately said, Shion is dead, Aizawa. She says in a shaky voice as she cried harder and drops her phone. And Aizawa hears her breathing hitched and can tell she's having another panic attack and calls the police on a separate line while trying to get Nemuru to calm down and trying to keep himself together, but failing, feeling as if the world was crashing down on him but persevering to calm Nemuru down. But here's nothing on the other end of the line and panics as until he hears something fall on the ground, immediately surmising that 
she collapsed. And as being as panicked as he was, immediately bursted directly out of the UA front doors and ran all the way towards the car to try to try to get towards his apartment in time. Hopefully he can get there, he thinks in his head. Time skip. It's been two hours and the paramedics have just left. Nemuru and Aizawa's house, after Nemuru said she was perfectly fine and she regained consciousness, she immediately walked outside to see the par- paramedics and all of the people who showed up off. As they left and all, she saw the ambulance off in the distance, distance. she immediately walked back into her home and closed the door behind her. Didn't know she closed it with a little bit too much force. And as she did, it caused a framed photo to fall off the wall. As the photo fell and hit the ground, which caused it to break, she picks it, she kneels downwards and picks up the photo to see it was a family picture of Aizawa, her and Shio, who was wearing Aizawa's scarf at the time and had a smile larger than life. After seeing this, she put the photo back where it was and walked in the kitchen with dead eyes as she pulled open a drawer drawer in the kitchen and pulled out a knife. While thinking of Shio, so many memories, she thinks, in her head, then thinks, I want to see her again. As she thinks this, and her voice is completely monotone as she says this, she moves the knife towards her chest as she was about to plunge it into her chest as hard as possible. The door swings open. Out of instinct, she looks towards the the noise to see Aizawa out of breath in front of the door with the horrified face as he looks at Nemuru and sees what she's about to do. As she, she sees his eyes as he's horrified and he runs at her and grabs the knife and throws it out of her hand quickly and grabs her and wraps her into a hug, a tight hug. It Nemuru immediately thought, "Ah, huh, this hug is warm and tight." For Nemuru, then a thought crossed her mind: if she was to die, then Aizawa would be all alone. She thought this, as she felt Aizawa's warm, warm embrace. Aizawa immediately said, "Please don't leave me." You're the only thing I have left, he says. She then hears a strange noise that sounds like crying, but immediately crosses it out of her mind. Aizawa Zazawa, he never cries. He He's never cried before, or at least he's never cried in front of me, until she looks up and gets her face out of Aizawa's chest, only to be met with Aizawa crying. Tears go running down his face at a rapid rate, and his face being contorted into quite the ugly face. As she saw this, Nimuru, who was still in the hug, ended up tightening the hug and wrapping it around Aizawa. Both of them hugged each other as they started to cry out their hearts, trying to deal with the pain that they have. And as they separated after an hour or two, they both looked at each other, and to say they looked like shit is an understatement. Aizawa had more eye bags than usual. He looked a little, lot more paler, and he looked as if as if his hair was going to turn gray, which a part of it did. As she saw this, Aizawa saw that she was a train wreck. Her mascara was completely spread across her face and from her tears, and... She was still ch- shaking. Her hair was completely out of out of order and wasn't straight anymore, but just all over the place. Immediately, Nimuru says, I almost made a mistake as she stares at All Might with eyes of regret, tears still flowing down, and she continued to speak. I still have something to live for and still have people to protect. And... You're one of the reasons I have to live for. Aizawa immediately says, same here, as he looks at Nemuru, with a smile. A rare smile. Not a small smile that he has, but a large smile. They look at each other and notice that 
they're getting closer. As they get closer, Aizawa immediately says to Nemaru as he immediately pulls her back into a hug. Says, Nemaru, I need you to do me a favor and stay at UA instead of the house. It's not safe anymore. Villains aren't like they were before. They're more ruthless and powerful than ever. Nezu, All Might, and I have a plan to stop the villains who caused the Honkai incident, but I need to know you are safe. Nemuru was about to say something until when they let go of the hug again, and she sees his eyes. They are sharper than before, more energized than ever, but more importantly, they had a purpose and they had a goal. That's what she saw when she looked into his eyes. Nemuru immediately said, Fine. I will, but I am a hero. So I will help in any way I can. So I will not stay out of this, but I will stay at UA. May do some good change of scenery, and maybe Hound, Hound Dog can help me through this. Aizawa immediately calls Nezu and asks him to pick her up. And that she agreed to what they talked about earlier before he left in a hurry. Three hours l- later, she is picked up by Nezu and Cementos. As they left, so did Aizawa to somewhere else. POV chains Aizawa. Aizawa is currently walking towards the hospital. As he walks in, he sees a person with a name tag that says Phil at the front desk and walks towards them and asks... I would like to request to see my daughter's body. Phil immediately says, What's her full name, sir? Aizawa tries not to cry while saying her name and does it successfully. Aizawa says, It was Shio Aizawa. Phil looks through the computer with a somber face the entire time and says, Follow me. As Aizawa follows him, going down the hospital, 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 uh, hallways getting towards the room of the deceased people after seeing so many injured people in the hospital and many people dying knowing this hospital is probably gonna be full soon and this just adds on to more of his resolve as he makes it towards a door and phil looks at him and says in there number 285 I will be leaving since you need your time seeing her body to move on. Maybe try talking to the body. It may help you move on faster. It did with me. He says as he leaves the room and gives Aizawa a shoulder pat before leaving. As he did, Aizawa walks through the room looking at the numbers until he finds number 285. He opens it. To see the face of his daughter, as he sees the, f- the body of his daughter, he, s- he says, Hey there, kiddo. I know I wasn't there for you that much before because of work, but I really miss you. So does your mother. If I remember correctly, you wanted to be a hero. I believe you could even, you could be a hero, even if others didn't. Even if you were quirkless, it didn't matter to me. The only thing that did was the way you and your mom and your uncle Mike always took care of you and the way that you always cared for us, the way you were a part of our family and you always will be. Just want you to know that I love you and so do all of us. As he says this, he didn't know... He was holding her hand the entire time, and his eyes had tears rapidly flowing out. Each word he said just ended up filling the resolve in his very soul. As the tears kept on flowing down, he immediately stood there for a while in absolute silence. He stayed there for quite a while. He didn't want to leave, but he had to. As he put her body back in place, as it was and was about to leave, he felt something holding his hand and heard his daughter's voice. Shio immediately says, 
I love you, Dad. Also, Mom, and goodbye. Sorry I have to go. As Aizawa hears his daughter, his daughter's voice, he turns around very quickly, hoping to get a glimpse of her. But he didn't. He saw nothing. He immediately says, We love you too, sweetheart. As he says this, he then proceeds to move his hand towards his face. As he touches his face, he immediately says, as his eyes were shadowed afterwards, I thought I finally finished crying. Guess I didn't. As he proceeded to walk out of the hospital, crying tears. Tears of sadness and tears of resolve. As Aizawa was getting over the death of his daughter, POV change. In another area, a green-haired boy is staring directly at a TV in his room as he does and he sees what the news reporter said about society and about how many people died that day. He felt something inside of him, something he would have felt before if he was trying to be a hero. He felt pity. He felt remorse. He felt something he didn't want to feel. As he looked at TV and couldn't help but to get angrier that he was a part of it, but a part of him was happy he was. He was so conflicted the entire time. It was as if half of him was going against the other half. As he immediately pressed the button on the remote to turn off the TV, he saw in the in that TV a reflection of a kid version of himself, a kid version of Azuku Midoriya. As he stared at, at it, and it said, It's not too late to turn back. You can still be a hero, the reflection said with a smile. As Izuku, the current Izuku, stares at it and says in an angry tone, It's too late. It's far too late for that now. As he punches the TV with all of his might, his hand goes straight through it, and the entire TV shatters. As he looks downwards, his eyes... His eyes are completely shadowed, and a few tears fall down his cheek. And that is What If Deku and Bill Cipher Made a Deal, Part 4. I hope you